episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the Gym Aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where Gym Aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. Hey guys, Evan from Gym Aware. We're really happy to be supporting Coach DeMayo's podcast series once again. For those that don't know, our main product is Gym Aware. It's the gold standard for measuring performance and implementing velocity-based training in the weight room. It excels in busy team training environments, and for many coaches, it's the Swiss Army knife of their toolkit. The Gym Aware is used for athlete profiling, jump testing, fatigue monitoring, and for listing within velocity zones. The system provides real-time feedback on individual targets, plus it's got an impressive range of leaderboards. Now, for those that are after a VBT device that's affordable, for the individual and for smaller groups, we recently released our new laser-based product, Flex. Importantly, it's been independently validated and proven to be both accurate and reliable. So if you're interested in either product, or you want to learn more about the velocity-based training and how it can help you as a coach, Check out our website or contact us directly. So in the meantime, we trust you enjoy the Coach DeMayo's podcast, Outside the Rack. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 89th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of Gym Aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper in the minds of the top practitioners in the world of sport performance to learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the Assistant Strength and Conditioning Coach for Football at the University of Mississippi, Zach Hingenbotham. Zach, man, good to see you today, bud. Hey, it's good to see you again. So I always enjoy talking to you. Yeah, man, it's great to catch up. I'm glad we got a little time here. But before we get too far into this, bro, who is Zach? So, all right, so kind of getting me a little about me. Uh, obviously, obviously, I'm a strength coach here at uh, University of Mississippi. I work with football. Uh, previously, I've been at Ohio State, Nevada, losing Monroe, Colorado State, uh, you name it, I've probably worked there. Uh, so that's kind of how my career has went. Uh, that being said, originally from West Virginia, played college football at Marshall University, uh, originally started at the University of Cincinnati, actually uh, started there, and then uh, immediately got hurt, got banged up a lot. And then from there, that kind of was in my, I spent way more time with my strength coaches in my playing career that I should have and just kind of got grew fond of it and got comfortable with it and the next thing you know uh I don't want to sit in an office chair which currently I'm sitting in an office chair but uh you know and it's just kind of something that I fell into and enjoyed doing so that's kind of that's kind of me in a nutshell man I'm simple I'm boring and uh I, I enjoy what I do so I put a lot of time into it well, that's great man you've had the luxury of working for some some pretty solid mentors and some people that have been able to guide you along the way you know from your time just as a player to begin with but then you know going from Ohio out to Colorado and Florida and now down in Mississippi so I'm excited to hear about this if you could describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career um really thinking about it Actually, I kind of came up with a conversation in the staff meeting the other day, and I really kind of sat down and was, was thinking about this. And I don't know if it was like one specific situation, but I remember when I was at Ohio State, and something I learned from Coach Mickey and Coach Meyer was obviously, as we know, as a profession, as a servant leadership profession, and all this other, other pieces, we're there for the kids, all this other piece, all these other pieces. But you hear a lot of people make excuses for X, Y, Z, and why things are going wrong. But the biggest thing I learned there uh, in terms of like a learning career and, that, and ba basically how I try to look at my job, uh, you know, is it's never the player's fault. 
even if it's indirectly their fault, it's never truly their fault in terms of what we're trying to do. It's always our fault. It's always our job to figure out, put the puzzle together and how to make the pieces click, whether it's training, leadership, all those other different pieces. It's always our fault, never their fault, that we have to figure out the answer to what's going on and how we approach every situation. That's how we have to look at it, whether it's controllables, uncontrollables, how can we modify the situation? How can we dictate what's gonna happen? And then overall, um, and then kind of going into that one thing I took away from Coach Myers, like never give up on a, a kid or an athlete. Cause you know, sometimes like people have a tendency to blame others and things like that. And I don't want to point fingers or anything, anything like that. But when it comes to that, you never know what's going to happen, whether it's a learning curve and an exercise, a learning curve in a situation, or whether it's a, in my setting in a collegiate setting, whether it's just a kid maturing and growing up, me being young myself, you know, there's things where I'm not right. I'm, I'm wrong a lot of times and I second guess a lot of things. But that being said, like just never giving up on the situation doesn't mean always screaming and yelling, hooting and hollering, all that different thing, but just being persistent to putting the puzzle together. And that's kind of like my biggest moment. No, I dig that because I think that it really is easy to point fingers and tell people, you know, that everyone else is making the mistake. But at the end of the day, like if we're the ones that are supposed to be guiding and getting them to do the stuff we need them to do, then well <laughs> yeah and uh, you know that's 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 kind of my take on it and again yeah, that's not like something i came with myself that was just something i wouldn't even know if it was a like, truly epiphany it might have been just like beat over my head with a rock and kind of bludgeoned the death with it and the concept it just kind of became who 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 i am and who i try to think about and again i'm not always right or wrong but that's how i usually try to approach every situation yeah, I mean, and I think that's the best thing you can do because if you, mm -hmm. you never know when things are going to click for people, whether it be the positive or the negative. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah, and that's the biggest thing. You, like, even when you think about the collegiate sector, you think of these athletes and you're like, well, this kid's never going to play for us. This so-and-so is never going to help us. Jimmy's, Jimmy or Johnny's never going to do X, Y, Z. The next thing you know, a year later, two years later, fifth year of their career, in a, in a in a one moment where they where you need them the most because you never gave up on them, they 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 fulfill what they're supposed to do. And it might be one time out of the thousands of times in their career, but the one time when you need them to do it the most, they did it because you did that. Um, and again, like I'll never forget this story. Like Coach Meyer was used to talk about, like Steve Miller in the national championship game against the. Uh, Oregon or Alabama, it was one of those games in that playoff run in 14 where the fifth year senior never really played, uh, came in the last second of the game and made a game clinching interception to the defensive end when he snuck out and dropped their coverage or whatever. And then like, that example the most, and that was, again, like another another piece of work for me, of whether, I don't know if it's epiphany or not, but it's when something that he was kind of talked to us about as a staff and the coaches and things like that. And I've always I've heard it when I played with Doc Holliday too, is when you, when I needed you your most, you gave me your very best. And that's how I try to approach every standard with myself and how I try to hold the kids to standard and every single day where I take it truly personal for myself is, you know, if I don't hold myself up to that standard, you know, and I'm never great or perfect at it, but it's the attempt to. And that's always the thought behind it. Yeah, man. I think that that's the best we can do because the best we can do is try to hold ourselves to the same standard as them. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's my biggest thing for like, the profession and just my as myself as a whole to never like truly be a hypocrite with the kids. You know, if we ask athletes to do X, Y, Z, one, two, three, whatever, so be it. Then if we're not doing X, Y, Z, one, two, three in our own lives, in our own professional careers, all those other things, how can we like really wake up and look at these, look at the athlete or the kid or whoever, so be it, ask them to do similar things if we're not doing it ourselves. So. You know, it's not easy and things aren't always supposed to be easy. So and that's just kind of how I've always looked at it. I, I dig it, buddy. I think that's great. And I think that that's something, too, that that internal reflection and the ability to, to try to keep with people brings about a lot of inquisitiveness and a lot of questions being asked and ways to dig deeper. So leads us right to number two, bro. That is if Zach could ask one question and he knows he's going to get the answer to it, what would that be and why? You know, really thinking about this, there's a lot of different ways to go about this. Uh, 
But and I'll, and I'll say this not in a strength conditioning way, but in the in the honest honest to God answer, like what really matters and then how do we get there? Like what truly matters and how do we get there? Whether it's personal, social, uh, lifestyle, coaching, whatever it is, like what truly matters and how do we get there? Because then you if you think about whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for me, the way I'm just currently thinking about it, if you were able to spend less time like truly searching and thinking about it, you could spend, maybe you could spend more time like actually getting the results you want, but then maybe again, maybe the, you, the time you spend trying to figure out what actually matters. But if you get the answer to me, you can figure that out and then you actually know how to go about it. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. No, but I, I would almost counter that with saying, isn't trying to find that out what might be the best part yeah and that's the other thing that's the, that's the other thing that might that might be the answer and you know that's 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 the question for me that i at least in my mind is i would want to ask is it again like you because everybody talks about these different things and self-reflection and self-improvement education but if that's the path you're supposed to go to get those then everybody should continue to follow that path and if not maybe there's a better way to do it and that's the question we're all trying to ask I dig it. I dig it, man. I think that that's pretty cool because I think that that is at the end of the day, you know, if you know what we're trying to get to, you can get there. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's a lot easier to get there if you already have the roadmap installed. But yeah. sometimes, you know, like, like you know, again, not to get too cliche or corny, but if you kind of try to figure it out along the way, you might figure something else out. You need, you didn't know you needed to know in that mm -hmm. until you get to that moment. So, Oh, no doubt. No doubt. I dig it, brother. I'm, I'm with you 100% there. Mm -hmm. But listen, man, you do a lot, you know, coaching, you're doing a lot of the science type stuff. You do a lot of stuff with return to play. And that's in with a high level college football team, which takes up 26 hours a day. But when there's a chance and Zach can breathe and come mm -hmm. back to neutral, what's your escape? My escape, my escape is home. I've seen my family. If it's not, it doesn't happen very often. But uh, for me, it's I'm very close to my dad. And uh, for me, when I get to go home and spend time outside, spend time in the woods, go back home, do all those different things, go back to West Virginia, that's a big escape for me. And then obviously because of that, hunting, fishing, all that good sort of stuff, I'm a pecker head of heart. So for me to be able to get away where it's where it's quiet and I could spend time away where it's not sound like a South South Beach. South Beach Club and there's not music and everything going on. It's just quiet, you know. For me, that's where it can kind of reflect and do those different things. That's kind of my escape. I'm not very uh, complex or needy in those in that area, so I'm pretty simple and I like to keep it that way. I dig it, man. There's just something about home. Appreciate, yeah, absolutely. There, yeah, ain't, ain't nothing close to it. No doubt, brother. No doubt. Well, listen, man, truly appreciate your time, brother. This is great. Glad to see you doing well. Glad to see you again today, man. And we'll be in touch soon. Appreciate you, Jay. Oh, thanks for always having me on. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, man. Cheers, brother.